thankful that we have such wonderful folks who can sing. Uh, we, uh, it's my privilege now to introduce to you uh, Brother Cobell Keenum. He was the first pastor of Highland Park Baptist Church. And certainly many of you have, can remember those wonderful times and the leadership that he gave in those beginning days. I am so thankful to introduce him and to really have him come and share with us at this time. He's coming right now, and Brother Keenum, as you come, let me go ahead and introduce uh, Mike Colston. Mike, as soon as Brother Colwell finishes, uh, if you would come up and, and share. Mike Colston uh, is on staff at First Baptist Pell City now, and doing a marvelous work there. God has blessed him in such a wonderful way. We are so thankful that Mike took time out of his schedule this week from First Baptist Pell City to come and share with us. It's a joy to have you come back. So Mike, when he finishes, would you just come on and, and then, I'm, is Chattis, am I right? Chattis? No, okay, that's what uh, they sang this morning, okay? So Mike, when you finish, when he, Brother Cobell finishes, you come. Would you welcome Brother Cobell this morning? It's such a fact. <laughs> Then the funeral parlors uh, would 
give us a calendar. And nearly always on that calendar there would be two verses of scripture. Proverbs uh, chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Great and wonderful portion of God's word there that has stuck with me down through the years. And our Father, we pray to the Lord Jesus Christ that you bless the reading of his word there, or the quoting of it, his verbally inspired word. And our Father, we pray that it might be a testimony where every person here to challenge our hearts and help us to fully and completely dedicate our lives unto the Lord Jesus Christ. For in his name and for his sake we pray. Amen. The number five in the scripture is the number of grace. And there are five elements in the scriptures that we just I mentioned to you here this afternoon. First of all, there is an invitation. The Word of God says, trust in the Lord. The Lord has invited us to put our faith and trust in the Lord. Then secondly, there is an, uh, an instruction. The Word uh, tells us how that we are to put our trust in the Lord. The Word of God says, with all thine heart, all thine heart, fully dedicated unto the Lord. Then thirdly, there is an interjection. And it just uh, by way of accident that this thing has happened, uh, being placed in the middle, uh, you know, we are not to lean unto our own understanding. Oh, bless God, we need to take real notice of that portion of God's word today. Because we're living in a day when man is looking into his own ingenuity, into his own intellect, into his own self-wise, uh, worldly wisdom. And I tell you, there's a danger there. And that's the reason for the trouble that we have in our homes today when there are 70 percent of them are one-parent homes. That's the reason for our preachers today that are leaving the ministry and for those that have turned on liberalism and are trusting the ways of the world. And that's the reason for our uh, schools today being in the great trouble that they're in. And that's the reason for our government today being in the great trouble that they are in when the President of the United States and his wife were put into office, the lesbians and the homosexuals and all these people into the uh, abortion that we have and the slaying of our babies, you know, a million and a half and plus a year. We are in great trouble. Why? Because there's God we're looking in uh, the direction of our own wisdom. The Word of God says in the book of Romans, and to profess themselves to be wise, they became fools. Brother, I'll tell you, that's our trouble today. All right, then we pick up, you know, on the next thought, the Word of God says there, you see, that we have a great endorsement that we ought to make. It says, in all our ways, we are to what? We are to acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. All of our ways. All of our ways, the word of God says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable or spiritual service. God knows all of us. Every bit of us. And we have the last element in that portion of God's word there, and we have insurance. The word of God says if we uh, do the things that are mentioned there, said then the Lord will direct our ways. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When I drove down the thought of the old muddy road, you know, the ruts up and halfway up to your knees, and walked to school with Tuscany there, you know, for uh, some years, and rain every step the way there, every step the way back. And never thought as I looked upon this big old farmhouse back in those days of the things that God would do. But God was trained me as a little child in that scripture. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And so it's been that God has direct my paths down through this year. Wish I had the time to tell you about a lot of the things, you know, that has happened to me. But I've preached in revivals in 307 churches. I, by the grace of God, have established seven good Baptist churches, and I do thank God for that. And uh, in the Fairview Baptist Church, where I preached for 38 and a half years, we had 26 uh, people called out in the full-time <coughs> Christian service. I preached in the uh, service there, the uh, Tennessee Temple University. I had a standing invitation to come back when I was on a revival 
Went to school, my wife was a little boy, two years of age, leading along. I had a little basket about so like, uh, like a laundry basket. Had my oldest daughter in there, walked in the administration building. And they said, you're here, yes, you look so and so, there's my name. And I said, here's $15, I want $15 for what you can uh, do for me. They gave me a name. Three apartments. Got off of the train that, that afternoon, 4.30 o'clock, Chicago, the wind blowing 30 miles an hour to the northwest, seven above zero. Got on a streetcar, rode up 800 block to South Street. No place to stay. Got those numbers, went out and found an apartment. Couldn't sleep that night, the bed bugs, thick as hell and all. But the Lord delivered from that too. And from that day on, I've been going. I didn't have to have a big fine automobile to go to school. When I went to school, I sold my job club, I sold my car, I sold everything I had to try to get a little together, you know, to go to school. I've never been sorry for that. Amen. Happy days of my life, and I walked down that old gravel road out there, and a little salary that people sacrificed to give it to me, and get a few little groceries and toast sack and throw them up over my shoulder. Walk back up this road. Oh, the joy. But I like the joy you had in your heart this morning, you serve it. Joy in the Lord. You impressed me as a pastor. God bless you. And I pray that God will be the case of each and every one of you here today. The joy in the Lord. The Word of God. Proverbs 5, verses 3 and uh, the chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. All thy ways. And he shall direct thy paths. There was a man that walked the uh, tight wire. Advertised in New York. Going to walk across the Niagara Falls. Great crowds came out that day. See that man that walked that tight wire. Across the Niagara Falls. Back. And there, in the preparation of the ceremony, and he started across. And as he got a little balance here, a little balance there, and as he topped all across the other side, grabbed the anchor, a little rest, and then back across. And he says, you know, I can uh, roll a wheelbarrow across that. How many of you believe that? Oh, they all raised their hand. They believed that you could do it. They put lace the wheelbarrow on that wire. And gradually and carefully, he rolled it across. Got it started back, rolled it across. And he said, you know, I can roll that wheelbarrow across that wire with a man in it. How many of you believe that? Everybody raise their hand. Pastor, you know how people go to church and ask, you know, you say, oh yeah, they raise their hand. He looked down and he said to that man who was standing nearby, he says, you can get in the wheelbarrow. Oh, no, oh, no.